Good evening and welcome to Spooky South Coast. Tim Weisberg here. Along with the Asylum Assassin, Matt Costa, Science Advisor, Matt Moniz, Stephanie Burke, and the uh, the Peanut Gallery here tonight in the background. We have uh, Andrew Lake and Scott Beeman hanging out with us. How are you guys doing? Talk loud. It's the radio. They can't hear you. Either. All right. And uh, don't, don't worry. I'm turning myself up, too. <clears throat> Sorry. Didn't mean to clear my throat on the air. So this is Spooky South Coast, where we talk about the paranormal each and every Saturday night. And if you can hear, I'm losing my voice a little bit, which I don't know. I kind of had a feeling this might happen when I found out that our guest tonight was Heidi Hollis, because if anybody remembers 11 years ago, it was almost 11 years ago this week. It was uh, the first week of April 2007 when we had Heidi Hollis on the show. And or it might have might have been. A little bit later than that. Anyway, but we had Heidi Hollis on the show, and that was the night that my voice completely and totally gave out. And I was talking like this to the whole show. So what I've got right now is a little bit better than what we had then. So let's be thankful for that. And we are broadcasting here on WBSM as well as on the Spooky South Coast app for Android and iOS and also rebroadcast on the Dark Matter Radio Network. Because, you know, our, our audio is great. A little response there to someone that I got from Dark Matter. And uh, if you want to join in with the show, you can call in at any point in time. 508-996-0500, 877-996-1420. You can also email us, Spooky Crew at SpookySouthCoast.com. And you can also, excuse me, you can also join in the chat on our Spooky South Coast app and as well as uh, on the... Spooky South Coast website. So, so many ways to get involved. Thank you, everybody, for getting into the chat room, even the ones that complain each and every week. Because, you know, we give you free entertainment on a Saturday night. Forgive us our trespasses. I, I didn't put your microphones on yet. That's on me. No, you didn't. You're punished. There you go. One of these ones is you. Yeah. They moved, they moved yeah. those mics around, so you can't blame me for that one. I was going to say, you get what you pay for. And the other thing, too, is the, I, I don't know, I, th- I think the topic of tonight is going to kind of make, make some weird things happen. I'm getting that feeling a little bit. Because for those of you who don't remember Heidi Hollis, she was one of the first people actually discussing shadow people in the paranormal. She was one of the first people actually exploring the origins of what these beings could be. And the last time we had her on, like, I saw shadow people after that. So I wouldn't be surprised if we had some weird stuff going on, especially tonight, because a little bit later on in the show, Andrew and Scott brought in an artifact from one of their investigations that they want to have Stephanie check out. Which I think that you might already be affected by. So you think this is already mm-hmm. having an impact? I do. So things could get really weird tonight. This should be good. Or it's already weird. You well, choose. it's always weird, but it might get <laughs> even weirder. And speaking of weird, it's time to talk about weird. Let me just do this right. Hold on. There we go. Spooky South Coast presents The Week in Weird with Paranormal News Correspondent Melody Knapp. And good evening, Melody. How are you? Good evening. I am well. I am well. How are you guys doing? Oh, we are spectacular. Good to have you back. It is so good to be back. I missed you all dearly. So but you, had, you had to make that money, we understand. Yeah, and I wasn't able to get the days off at first, but now we're back to normal and there should be no more interruptions. All right, so let's jump right into it. What do you have for us this week? All right, it's, uh, it's very interesting. You actually just brought up shadow people. Uh, my first article is actually related to that. Um, the Hat Man, which is more than a shadow person, which was originally brought to us by WeCanWeird.com. Um, there's no shortage of specific supernatural phenomenon researched by their investigators, but on April 12, 2001, those familiar with Art Bell's popular radio show, Coast to Coast AM, 
mm-hmm. was the first documented mention of this new figure investigators would now begin focusing on, the hat man. His guest of the night. Wait, 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 wait. I don't mean to interrupt you. Yep. What, what was that date again? April 12th, 2001. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Yep. Um, his guest of the night, Bender Strikes, who's the First Nation elder, teacher, and co founder uh, co- of the Deer Tribe Medis- Medicine uh, Society, was discussing shadow people when they began noticing an alarming amount of experiences with this new so called hat man, who was originally assumed to just be a shadow person. Um, the phenomenon seems to be centered around basements, and according to most who experience the manifestation and manifest in situations of intense negativity and family dysfunction. Uh, many believe this entity has been present with them since childhood if they do experience it. It also appears that if one person in the household has an experience, it is almost certain that shortly after that, another member of the family will have an experience as well. Uh, so very, very they were talking shadow people with me because I, I found that article and it just kind of popped with me. Well, that actually fits exactly into what we're talking about tonight because our guest, Heidi Hollis, is one of the people who is one of the foremost authorities on the hat man subject. Perfect. So, perfect, perfect. A little serendipity <laughs> there. All right. What else do you have for us? All right. Um, so to round us out tonight, I actually received an article from suit on name. Uh, thank you very much for participating. And it's actually about a two-year-old boy who believes he's reincarnated of Lou Gehrig. Um, and it was a story that was originally posted on People.com. So, Kathy Bird, a realtor based out of California, believes her two-year-old son is the reincarnation of Lou Gehrig. Although skeptical at first of her young son's claims, she was able to confirm the information he relayed to her via Google searches, radio and TV shows, books, and sources of Gehrig's archives. This shocking revelation came when her son blurted out one day, Mommy, I used to be a tall baseball player. Of course, she responded to him with a good intention correction, saying, No, he will be a tall baseball player. Only to be met with his response of, No, I was a tall baseball player. Tall just like Daddy. The boy is still too young to read and has not been exposed to any baseball information whatsoever as his family does not follow the sport at all. And also, the boy has an unbelievable talent for baseball, even at the age of two. Coincidence or connection? <laughs> well, I mean, uh, we know somebody here locally who has been, uh, I've been trying to get her to come on for years. She has a child who is a reincarnated World War II fighter pilot. And, or, That's you know, this, cool. is, this is what the child has told them. And uh, mm-hmm. and I've been trying to get her to to bring him on for a couple of years now, but they're a little, you know, they're a little shy about telling the story publicly. But it's you know it's it's happened quite a bit. I know Stephanie. I'm sure you've heard stories like this from people too, right. where they can, because you do a lot of readings for people, so you probably yeah. hear them. They might come to you looking to find out who their past, what their past life is. But I'm sure a lot of times people come into you kind of already having an idea of who they might have been. Yeah, I really try to stay away from the whole past life thing because opening well, up. Right, but I'm sure people talk about it with you. They do occasionally, but I try to avoid it if possible because opening up that can of worms opening opens up this whole mental, emotional can, uh, I, can of worms, I guess is the best way to describe it, that uh, would affect you in this life. And the other thing, too, is I don't know if you've noticed this, Melody, too, but a lot of people, when they talk about their past lives, it's it's always somebody famous. Isn't that interesting? I've always wondered, like... I think I, be- I believe I came across maybe two stories where, you know, one of them was a boy in Chicago who actually believed he was reincarnated from someone who died in the sh- Chicago fire, if you guys remember that. Mm-hmm. But uh, you're, you're totally right, Tim. The majority of these reincarnation stories are of famous people. It's like every haunted place had George Washington sleep there at some point, you know, and <laughs> every person with a past life was once, uh, you know, Amelia Earhart or Abraham Lincoln or something, but... I don't, I don't know. I'm and sure. How many people can truly be reincarnated at the same time? Right. That's exactly. Awesome. I'm. I'm pretty sure that if I have past lives, I was probably like a dog people used to kick or something. Or, oh my god! Stop. Yeah. No. I was. I was something terrible. I was something pretty bad. I'm sure. This is. Oh, no. You know how. You know how. Like uh, we've had guests in the past, like Richard Salva, who say that you know your past lives are supposed to be evolutions, 
and you're supposed to be getting closer and closer to perfection the more you're evolved. I think I'm still in the very early stages. <laughs> you are terrible. Oh, terrible. I think I've, I've slowly ro- risen my way up from, you know, just barely literate human type creature to where I am now. But think of all the potential I have. I got squished, and now you've worked your way up. Think of how much potential I have in front of me. I don't even know if I have words for you right now. All right, that's fine. Well, you yeah. got to come up with something because this is radio. I'm going to have to. So just the look won't work. <laughs> all right, well, thank you, Melody, very much. We look forward to talking with you next week. Thank you all, and I'll be uh, in and out of the chat room. Talk to you guys tonight. Awesome. Right. Have a good night. We do, we, do need, we do need to get Melody a little bit of a better audio line. Yeah, definitely. I guess if she's if she's going to be part of the spooky crew, maybe I'll send her one of my headsets or something she can use. Does that help, do you think? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Phone? I don't know, man. Phones are hit like or even miss. If, even if you're connected to the phone, would it make it any better, do you think? Oh, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, you're talking directly into it instead of right, right. having the, the microphone pick it up. But I don't know. Phones are screwy. <clears throat> what we need is we need, we need investors. Who will start putting in <laughs> like serious money into the show so that we can have you know state of the art equipment? We can just send it out to people like, oh, you're our guest. You're going to get a package from FedEx of all the audio equipment you need. Please send it back. That is super fancy. It'll never happen. No, I think we absolutely have a, not. We have a call on the line here. Let's okay. go to the phones. Good evening. You're on Spooky South Coast. Hey, good evening. How are you? Not too bad. How about you? All right. It's on your mind. Good. I called you. Uh... I don't know, a year or so ago, and I had questions about a house on uh, 195 over near the Watapa Reservoir. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, you gave me information on that one. Another one came to my attention today. It's a house on uh, Elm Street in South Dartmouth. You heard of that one? No. Well, apparently it's uh, been on the market for like a thousand something days. Four thousand days, my wife tells me. Four thousand days it's been on the market. Wow. And, uh,. <clears throat> Somebody told me that there was a murder suicide there. Uh, guy's wife was going to go fishing. I mean, I've, I've never heard anything about that at all. And how long ago would that have been, that murder suicide? Uh, I think it's about. 2000. Let's see. Oh. I'm not sure on the murder, murder suicide, but it's been on the market for. How, how many years? 2000. Hang on. Since 2005, it's been on the market. Okay, so I mean, there's probably some uh, some uh, information in the Standard Times archives I can access on that. Uh, but the, I mean, it's not uncommon for a house though that had something like that happen for it to to sit and languish. But well, I not, remember not that for that long. In, I would uh, think. Westport on 195, it had been vacant for many many years since I was in high school, and the reason was was something like. With a mortuary connected with it, he told me. Right. I, I don't think it was for sale for all that time, though. I think it was just it sat vacant because they weren't they, utilizing they it. They couldn't sell it for I think it was a matter of eventually, the, what they do, they bought, somebody bought it. It was a, a foreclosure. The house was originally, because I know the people that owned it, uh, it was bought as a foreclosure and used as a warehouse for a uh, funeral supply company. But where did, where did, uh, and eventually, it's been torn down, and yeah, a new house has been yeah. put up in its place. A couple of different places have put it up on it. I think they split the property. Yeah, because it was a bigger lot. Yeah. And so it looks like there's, like, two houses there now. So, but, I mean, that's something that, you know, when you have an abandoned place or an empty place like that, legends pop up. Legends pop up about all the mills down in New Bedford that are sitting empty, about things going on in there. So that doesn't surprise me, but you I would think... it was you, quite a legend, because when I was in high school, a few of the guys I was in, in, in school with... They had an idea to go uh, camp out in the house for a night just to say that we we, we had done it. Uh, when push came to shove, no, nobody was uh, really interested in going through with it. Yeah, unfortunately, that's the that's what ends up happening. But we, you know, a house though that had a murder suicide in it, somebody's going to bite on that if the price is right. I mean, somebody's going to say, "I have no problem moving on, into a place like that." The market, sorry, I, I think it's on the market now for like four hundred thousand. Well, that's probably why it's sitting there. Is it? Do you think it's worth it? What was the address again? Uh, it's on Elm Street, South Dallas. All right, I might take me a little. I'm, I'm going to give the address for you. It's a 548 Elm. I'm just going to do a quick search here and you know, see if I can pull it up. Oh, well, gee, it's <clears throat> it's not a bad looking not a bad looking property. 
Nope, not at all. Oh, that's 547. Was that what you said, 548 or 540? Oh, here's one, with, here's one with the for, for sale sign. Oh, no, that's a nice house. The white one, you're saying? Uh, no, I think it was brown. No, uh, this one. Oh, that says the driveway sign. Did I get the wrong address? <laughs> yeah, that doesn't matter. This, I don't want to bore the radio audience with me looking at pictures. But, I mean, I can't imagine that that happening there would be what stains it for so long. I mean, it's probably just a matter of, you know, maybe they won't budge on the price or maybe there's a septic issue that happens quite a bit and houses just sit there. So many years, though. I'm just guessing. There it is. Four closed. 548 ohm. Yeah, it's a brown house, not brown. That's the street view that you see? Um, Oh, wait a minute. Another picture of it? We just pulled it up on ours, and the oh, one is... side of it's uh, got a white, white stripe on the first floor. <laughs> or maybe the maybe the white's covered up by the bushes in the front. What we see over here is just a brown house with a uh, with five forty seven attached to it. I'm looking right now, but five forty eight is next door, I believe. If I can get it to work, um, five forty eight is the one. The white one that has the for the yeah. for sale sign. Um, if yeah. you look at Zillow, which 4, is right underneath, two hundred twenty-two days on Zillow. Yeah, it'll tell you all the details you need to know. No, you're not sure when the murder suicide occurred. Do you have a rough idea? <laughs> rough decade? I wish I did. Why not? I mean that's easy to find too. I'm sure that, that was uh, that would be documented. Yeah. So. Yeah. And they have to disclose that if they're trying to sell the house in Massachusetts, anyways. So. That is true. That is true. Um, and or you could just go back and look at the police records. Of the, no, right, you know. right. You can absolutely. I mean, you could if it was fairly recent or at least within the last ten years, you could find it right online. Um, but if not, you can. Anything is public record. Yeah. You can walk into a police station and ask about it. But Same. you can talk to the realtor, too, because the realtor has to disclose that information. If they know. Yeah, but if you do your, your homework, you know. Um, now, how far they, back do they have to go with that? I don't know. You know, it, it, I could understand anything within the past 50 years, but say a murder like Lizzie Borden's. Would you well, have, that's a different... That's a commercial property, so. Um. I jump back in here after uh, trying to get our guest on the phone. Um, what, what was what was the issue? What's the question? How far back do they have? Does a real estate agent have to disclose whether a murder or something? I don't think you been? have to disclose it in Massachusetts. I think you do have to. In do you? Yeah. I thought you didn't have to. Mm. I thought if I thought it was a matter of if somebody asks, you can you have to tell them, but you don't have to include it in any of the information. I thought you had to. I only remember that because there was a house down the street from me that an, an elderly couple was killed in. And this was going back into the 90s. And I happened to talk to a person that had lived in it for a while. They've since sold it because it's like a little vacation type property for most people. It's right on a pond. And they said that when they bought the house, again, this was probably early 2000s they probably bought it but they said that nobody told them about it they found out about it later from the neighbors so i know it wasn't disclosed to them at the time and it was pretty brutal (laughs) the way these people were killed so i guess eventually it's going to come out if you if you live there and the neighbors are there so it probably behooves you to tell people ahead of time yeah there's going to be a record somewhere avoid any issue well there's always going to be a record right easy to find out but that's why everybody should just do their own research anyway if you're going to buy a place. You know? you know what's funny is every single time my friends go to buy a house, they always say, I refuse to sign the purchase and sale without you doing a walkthrough first. <laughs> Some people feel that way. Right. I mean, I've, I've told people before when they're like, oh, I'm thinking about buying a house. How can you tell if it's haunted? Well, the easiest thing to do is to ask people if they know yeah. if it's haunted. Absolutely. You know, talk to the neighbors. I know you're going to seem like the weirdo that walks up to the neighbors before you've even moved in and be like, Hi. I'm Tim. I'm thinking about buying the house next door. Have you heard anything about ghosts in that house? Hey, you know what? That's how we get some of the best ghost stories. I know that's how Andy's gotten some of his best ghost stories, talking to the neighbors. So. But you, you can also, you know, just look it up. See what, ha- see what right. you can find. Right. Do your research. 
It's super easy. There's there's this thing called Google that you can use. Well, uh, I was trying to get our guest uh, Heidi Hollis on the line. Hopefully, uh, she calls back. Take another call here. Good evening. You're on Spooky South Coast. Hey, I just wanted to give you a bit of information about disclosure. There's actually a Massachusetts law on mm-hmm. that, and it's Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 93, Section 114, under the real estate disclosure. So they have to tell you in advance if they something happened there? They not tell you at all. Okay. That's under Mass Law. So under Mass Law, they don't have to tell you? They do not. It's okay. not required. All right. So if if somebody asks, then can you... You know, if it's refuse public, it. if it's public information, they can share it. If it's not public, they're not required to tell you. Okay. Well, I mean, is, is, are you a realtor at all, or I'm not. I okay. work in somewhat similar field. That's why this. I, I know that some of that information. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm just curious because I'm wondering. I know that Massachusetts is a non-disclosure state for hauntings, but there are some states that do require you right. to report if you think that the house is haunted, which Correct. I've always some thought is kind of crazy. Do require is some, let me correct that. Some states do require the realtor to disclose that if they know it. Uh, but Massachusetts, they're not required. Um, oh. They do not disclose that. So that's a loophole. Now, See, if nobody ever tells the realtor, then the realtor is not responsible, right? That's correct. Oh, that's interesting. Correct. And most realtors, they don't really want to hear that stuff. <laughs> you know what I find, though? I find that when you're working on ghost TV shows and the house is for sale, and you're like, hey, can we get in there for a couple of nights? We'll pay you some money. You know, then they're like, yeah, fine, it's haunted. Yeah, if it's a couple of bucks, you never know. <laughs> right, people, exactly. People change. But yeah, I figured only because you guys mentioned it, and it comes up all the time, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, do they have to disclose? Or not to, but that's the law that it fall, follows under, under the mass general laws, and that's what they, they stick by. They don't have to tell you. And under that law, it also talks about suicides and death and all kinds of strange things. Under that law, if you, hit, if you research that law, you'll get a lot more uh, insight. It's actually pretty interesting. It goes pretty, pretty in-depth. It is pretty interesting because you would think that, you know, you would, as a home buyer, you'd want to know all that stuff up front just for the fact that, you know, it, it, not even getting into the idea of hauntings, but just the fact that, you know, that could be something that people are, are coming to your house and gawking over. That could be something that people are, you know, like the people who bought buy the Amityville house. You know, they all have right. to deal with people showing up on their lawn all the time. So if you move into the house that has, you know, a famous South Coast murder happen in it, then people are going to start showing up and talking about it at some point. Yes, yes they will. Yes, they will. So. Um, I mean, it's all over the place. I mean, people pass away in houses all the time. Um, bad things happen in houses. We know that. I mean, we're, we all live local. We hear all the horror stories. Um, but, you know, sometimes they try to make things quietly go away, and then they can sell the house, and nobody knows. Well, I mean, I guess the good thing is, though, there's, you know, we do have the opportunity now to research these things on our own and figure them out for ourselves. We do. We do. And uh, we certainly, uh, you know, they, they can try to hide it. But again, as long as it's public, typically, if, uh, in my experience, if it's been a site of a murder or something horrific of that nature, some of that information not, may not be accessible um, to the public to view because it's probably connected to reports that are not yet sanitized for public review. Um, but as you said, the neighbors would know. Neighbors are a very well, good source of information. And if you want to shell out a couple of bucks, you can always go to diedinhouse.com, which does the, the work for you. So uh, I don't know if you're familiar with this website, but it, it, it gained some popularity a couple of years ago where if you pay, it's looking at it right here, a single search is eleven ninety nine. So for 12 bucks, you can find out not only if somebody died in your house, you can find out if there was a registered sex offender near the house. You can find out if there's been any floods or any property damage. You can find out if there was any fire related to the house. And you can also find out if there was ever a meth lab in the house. Hey, <laughs> All those are important to know, by the way. So it's very it's very worthwhile for eleven ninety nine to find out if there's ever a meth lab in your house. Because I would actually see if I could do a reverse search and find the houses where the meth labs were. So that I would feel not so bad about anything that I didn't do to keep up with it. Because I could be like, hey, at least it's on a meth lab. That's true. That's true. All right. Well, well thank but you. But anyways, I'm, uh, I enjoy the show, so I'm going to keep listening. But uh, just wanted to give you that information that I've tripped across in the course of my career. All right. Awesome. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And uh, that, the other question that I would have, too, about the, the meth lab is, did they leave any behind in case I fall behind in my mortgage? Maybe I could go Walter White.
I can't even deal with you. But you never know. Stuff like that causes hauntings. I've been to places. <laughs> or at least that seen things. That, uh, that leave behind some interesting spirits. I've been there with people that are in this room. <laughs> well, why don't we uh, discuss that a little bit here? Okay. Uh, because uh, we are going to try and get our guest on the phone, uh, Heidi Hollis. And uh, I guess the number that I had for her in the press information was, was bad. So we're going to try and see if we can get a hold of her. And Andrew, why don't you, if you want, you can come and take my microphone if you want. Or take my seat. Or yeah, either we'll, way. We'll kick up Moni's. We won't miss him anyways. <laughs> okay, I'm on. All right. So uh, give us a little bit of background on uh, on what, on this entire story. Well, uh, I got uh, contacted by a guy who lives um, in my town of Greenville, Rhode Island. And uh, he told me that uh, he had found my website and um, uh, liked it for the fact that I didn't look like I was trying to get on a TV show because he didn't want any publicity whatsoever. So he told me the uh, that his family has owned a house in uh, North Providence um, for uh, over 30 years. And the family, uh, being the Catholics that they are, just would not accept the fact that this house was weird. They openly admitted that for 30-some years they've been denying the, uh, the weird activity in the house. But recently have uh, come to the conclusion that the house has to be haunted despite their belief system and uh, wanted me to look into it. So uh, how did that go? I know we talked a little bit about you going. How many times have you been to the house? What happened? Well, I, I went for an interview with the um, the homeowner, the, uh, the the mother of the uh, mm-hmm. the guy I talked to, and I found them to be very down to earth, real people. Which there was is awesome. N- there was nothing about them that suggested they were looking for attention, and they certainly weren't enjoying this uh, this saga in their life uh, to the point where they they now would like to to, to part with the property, but um, curiosity has gotten the the, the better of them uh, because of the last tenant that was in there. Um, who had commented twice, he was there for less than a month, and he commented twice that, um, you know, I think that house is haunted. And the family rule of thumb is uh, don't ever talk about it. So they just kind of dismissed it. But um, uh, something occurred at the house that was rather upsetting. Uh, The house is now vacant, and the family won't even go near it. The mother literally will not enter the house ever again. And the son, who's, you know, my age, he's a pretty rugged, blue-collar guy, Mm -hmm. he's now confess that he will not go in the house unless it's daytime and he has other people with him. Wow. Um, I've been in the house. It is extremely uncomfortable. It, it isn't just because they set my mind up to it before I entered the house. The house is very, very creepy. Well, I can say for sure I've been working with you for, what, at least six years now? E- easily, And yeah. I have walked in places where I've wanted to run out the door, and you stand there absolutely cool as a cucumber. Nothing really ever bothers you. So for you to tell me that, this is kind of yeah. shaking you up a little bit. Well, my, my, return, my return visit, um, you know, Scott Beeman, who's with us, um, Scott had asked me um, after taking a tour of Haunted mm-hmm. Rhode Island with me, he said, hey, if you ever have a case, could, could I tag along? And, and I thought about this case. I just wouldn't go in this house and spend a night by myself. I have to admit it. The place is that yeah. spooky. And I figured, you know, you know, Scott seems pretty level-headed. I'll call him up. And he, he drove all the way from the Wareham area. And uh, Scott agrees. The house just was very uncomfortable. And at around 1 o'clock in the morning, on that vigil, we did clearly hear somebody walking through the downstairs. Mm-hmm. We definitely heard it. Um, so far, we haven't found any anomalies in our uh, in our photographs, but the house has um, recently been been tainted, and I've brought something from the house that's connected to the last person who was in there, um, and I was hoping that maybe you could pick up on something on it. Right. So It's been sitting in a bag under her chair. <laughs> under my chair for a while now. So that, that was fun. Um Tim, what are you? What's going on? What's the status? We uh, we will be joined by Heidi Hollis in the next hour. In the next hour. Okay. Okay. So, you want me to tell you about the weird stuff under my chair? Yes. Let's let's get right into that good stuff. So I can't see what it is. I tried to look in the bag and I can't. Right. Figure out. <laughs> it's, it's it's in two it's bags. Un, it's unusual so, to bring somebody this kind of um, item. What I originally said to you was: Is it connected to the house? You said... Yes. Yes. Is it hair? Yes. That's disgusting. Okay. Um, the feeling that I got, um, I'll tell you at least as much as I can. I told you I'm a little off my A-game tonight because my house has been hit by the flu. Yeah. So um, that was lovely timing. But 
you walked in and I could feel it almost walk across my back like as you as you sat down. Um, it is not a nice feeling whatsoever. Um, and I watched people's personalities start to change as soon as you brought it in the room. Um, what I picked up on was an extremely angry man, almost with a... Um, it reminds me, and you'll understand what I'm saying, and then we'll have to explain afterwards, but almost that, that crazy factor, the same crazy factor that we came across in the yard of the house in Situate that we went to. Um, I would probably go as far as to say like a mental illness, like just not all there, just totally off the rocker. Um, very, I don't, I don't, I'm trying to choose my words carefully so I don't set anybody off, but, um. Just, just blurt out whatever you're feeling. Don't even worry about that. It, I'm also trying not to swear too. That doesn't help anybody. I got, my, um, I got the dumb button right here. No, just <laughs> really, just say right whatever pops here. in your head. Don't, don't try to filter it too. All it keeps, don't restrict, don't restrict the gift coming through because uh, you're worried about being on the air. All I saying. keep seeing is this guy just sitting here rubbing his hands together and it's almost this murderous type of, um, personality where he's just, he doesn't care at all. He just, he gets fixated on one thing and then that's it. And he's taking care of business. So, um, but business to him is not what we would consider something normal. Um, I, I feel like there's a lot of bad things that have happened around him or caused by him. Um, whether it was something that he couldn't control or not, I'm not exactly sure, but yeah, he seems like a nut bag. Yes. So far what you're saying, it, it seems like this person was rather disturbed. Okay. All right. Um, he doesn't, I mean, is it his hair? Yes. Oh, God. Okay. Um, so you've been with me. You've worked with me enough now. You probably, right. you probably know my movements, the way I talk, everything else probably better than anybody. Um, you know that when I come across something that's just disgusting or negative, it makes me feel sick to my stomach, and I want to run out of there. That's, that's why. The exact that's why I tried to warn you a little yeah. bit before we started. Um, I have been sitting here nauseous the entire time, trying to fight off whatever that is because it's something that I don't want connected to me or following me, um, or anywhere near me. So we might have to throw it outside once I'm done. But um, it, he is just not, not okay, not all right. No. Do you, are you certain that this energy is belonging to the person that hair belonged to? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Because it does fit. I just wondered if there could have possibly been a second character involved in the story that nobody knows about. Okay. Right now, you brought me one connected to a certain person. Yes. If I went to the location, that would be a more accurate answer. But okay. as of right now, like, so working with psychometry, you're working with an object. If mm-hmm. if you were to hand me a piece of your hair, I'm not going to pick up on Moniz even if he's your partner in crime, because it's your hair. Okay. So if that makes sense. Well, that's what, um, I, that's what I hoped. I hope that that's how it would work right. for you. So this is pertaining to just him, yeah. which is... And so far, you, you are skirting the issue about this character. Okay. Um, I keep trying to connect as much as I can, but without getting totally into whatever he is all about, because he is just a disgusting human being, just sitting there, just just enjoying being... Well, what, what was really strange is before this uh, person um, left the house, mm-hmm. he had said twice to the relation who owns the house, yep. hey, is that house haunted? Because I keep seeing things and hearing things, and they just mm-hmm. blew it off. But the thing is, the family's told me they experienced the same things themselves. Okay. And the other thing is, not one relationship has survived this house. Okay. Not one. And I found out some other interesting things about the area. Uh, an historic society just recently, within a year, were digging for lost Quaker graves in the property and found them. A very old, spooky tree fell mm-hmm. over onto an old, dilapidated barn, and that had to be removed. And at one point, when a tenant left, which was a very good tenant, mm-hmm. again, their marriage broke up. And I was looking for a term. I was saying to the, the homeowner, hey, you know this dead-end street well. You've been here for a long time. You know, if any of your tenants or a neighbor may have been messing with, and I couldn't find the word to use, mm-hmm. I meant to say black magic, but yep. for some reason, my voice just spat out voodoo, mm-hmm. and the son and the daughter looked at each other, and then looked at me and said, after the previous couple moved out when their relationship broke up, mm-hmm. uh, they found a voodoo doll in the house. That's creepy. And she burned it. Okay. Uh, but they said the house has been weird for some time, but this recent tenant who is no longer in the house... 
um, the way he left the house was rather um, unsettling. Okay. He definitely had issues. Yeah. Yep, I get that. Um, Family didn't know it. It was a bit of a shock. He must have been hiding these, these issues rather well. In other words, they didn't see it in him. Was, well, that's what I was describing to yeah. you with the, um, with the other character that we came across in Situate. Businessman, totally normal. He had a very impressive career. Yeah. This guy had a yeah. very clean-cut career. And behind closed doors was yes, like a totally different personality. Well, well I mean, we're, we're, we're not giving away any specifics here on the air that would lead to anybody figuring out who it is that you're talking about. Yeah. So, I mean, kind of just... What do you think it is? Even if it's an inkling. What, what he did to the yeah. house? What, 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 what is this thing that you're kind of dancing around that you don't want to say? Well, I'm dancing around because... Or are you only picking up little bits of it enough so that you can't say? Right. I'm not talking okay. candidly because there are some things that I feel like I probably shouldn't say on air. Um, but I... Um, because you just never know who's... Would you say, from having this very personal object here, would you say he's still grounded? He's still around? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, very easy to pick up on. Um, if if he were gone over to the other side, for lack of, of better terms, it would be a different connection, and it would be um, more of a... When you leave that, that state and you pass over, it's different. Mm-hmm. Um this is like still stuck in that energy of how he was as a human, you know, just, or alive. Um, just this crazy. Would you say he was responsible for his own end? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Cause that's what the police determined. Yep. He, um, he took his life in the cellar. Right. They found him four days later. Oh God. And it was awful gruesome. The, the old lady who owns the house, her first thought was who hung a Halloween mannequin up in the, the basement. Awesome. And her son said he had to drag her up the stairway screaming. I'm sure. Um, it was a shock to find out that he was living this lifestyle, mm-hmm. but it was also, they weren't too sure if maybe somebody else helped him with his demise. Um, please say no. They said it was at his own hands, but activity in the house, um, has involved lights being turned on in the daytime. And they even called the cops to do a walk through the house. Right. The light that was on upstairs was off by the time the police went in the house mm-hmm. and the light they found on that they knew was off was the light right where he killed himself. Okay. So the family is worried that he's become one of the, the latest inhabitants of this haunted house. That for 30 years, they've been going, no, no, that that, that yeah. shadow was nothing. That voice was nothing. But um, Scott will tell you that, you know, it, the house is just, it's just not a comfortable vibe. I, I'm glad he was this, there. This under my chair is not comfortable. Yeah. Um, at all. That's definitely something I don't and, want to take And part just in. to be clear, you know, so that everybody mm-hmm. understands, she had no idea beforehand. No. Nothing. She, Nothing. The only conversations that were actually had about whether or not we should do this was you asking me. I never even called and asked her. I wanted to go through you because I wanted to keep her as separate as I could. Right. Because, and obviously, you know, if you called her and spoke to her, she might pick up on some of the things just coming from you. You yeah. know what I mean? And so you would ask me and I said, sure. And there was something that we weren't going to do on air originally. But right. You would ask if, you know, we yeah. thought it would be a good idea to do mm-hmm. on air. And... I know you were a little hesitant to do it on air because, you know, if Andy's calling you for something, it's probably not going to be, you know. A good thing. It's not going to be sunshine and rainbows <laughs> and yeah. lollipops it everywhere. Is. It never is. He, he apparently ceremoniously removed that hair just before he, he hung himself. It was, he took a mirror into the so, room and Yeah, well, that's what I was going to say off. is we, I really feel like there's this, do I have time? We have about two minutes. Right. Yeah. Um, there's a balloon connection attached to this and I don't know where the balloons come in, um, but at the same time I keep feeling like there's... I, I felt the dark magic thing before, but I just feel like it was almost like a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, like ritualistic type. Ceremonial? I've, Satan I found, I found some fresh <laughs> markings right near where he died. There were okay. two, two SWAT stickers, two okay. pentagrams, and yeah. a uh, very um, kind of like Blair Witch looking yeah. configuration That's that, what we're, that we like. knew. But what would you call that? Like. Worshipping Satan. I, I, uh, I, well, the, they, you... the pentagrams weren't upside down. They were pointing up. So. Doesn't necessarily mean much. But, yeah. It just, um, means he just means he wasn't good at it. Doing, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Andy, we have about a minute left. Sure. Do you want to show the object to the camera? Uh, Do you want to touch it? You already did, right? It's Yeah, I had to. Uh, Scott also had to. He helped me out. But it's basically this camera here. Uh, uh, Matt will tell you. He's, yeah. 
He's the master director. Oh. He knows. So that is the, the other creepy thing was um, they could they found nothing near the body that he could have used to cut the hair off. That's what made me wonder about it. Like, how do you cut your hair off, but yet they don't find scissors or a razor? No, that is pretty body. bizarre. Um, That's why I wondered if he had uh, somebody with the same habit in the house with him, and maybe it started off together and somebody left. But well, either that or he did it, ditched the scissors somewhere, God knows where. If it was he was dealing with ritualistic stuff, he could have gone out in the backyard, buried it, and then taken the hair with him, or he could have saved it from a haircut. Um, uh, yeah, it's just the whole thing. The whole thing is bizarre. But the light switching on does seem to be him yes. trying to get attention. Yep. All right, well, um, we're going to take a break. Yeah, we have sure. to go to the news. Sure, thanks we come so much, back Steph. on the other side, we will talk with Heidi Hollis about shadow people. And you can call in during the show, 508-996-0500, 877-996-1420. We will be back in just a few moments with more here on Spooky South Coast. New Bedford, New Bedford. 